Very good afternoon. I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall solve two numerical problems from vapor compression refrigeration cycle. If we you know recall our discussion that we had in the last class, then we can understand the operational aspects of a vapor compression refrigeration unit. So, in the last class mainly we have discussed about the processes those constitute together to form the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Then we have also identified the role of several components I should say mechanical components pertinent to the vapor compression refrigeration cycle and identifying all those components we had mapped several processes occurring in different components both in T s and P h diagram. So, in the last class just we have mentioned about the refrigerating effect or refrigeration effect and typically that refrigerating effect is represent represented by the tons of refrigeration. So, what is the physical significance of this particular unit? Let us discuss here today. So, if we try to recall tons of refrigeration. So, this is basically the unit of refrigeration effect or refrigerating effect and whenever we design or a designer designs a refrigerating or refrigeration unit system, typically the most important you know uh, term that is taken into account is the tons of refrigeration. So, this is basically the capacity of that particular unit capacity of having refrigerating effect. So, what, what is the physical meaning of this? This is basically you know equivalent heat extraction that could change 1 ton of water into 1 ton of ice in 24 hours. So, if we write, so this is basically you know 1 ton, 1 ton is equivalent. So, it is equivalent heat extraction that could change 1 ton of water into 1 ton of ice in 24 hours. Typically, typically 1 ton of refrigeration is 3.5 kilowatt in SI unit or 211 kilo joule per minute. So, this is basically you know uh, the 1 ton of refrigeration in other way you also can define it you know this is equivalent heat you know transfer from the it is heat transfer from the surroundings that is equivalent to convert one to melt or convert one ton of ice into water in 24 hours. 
So, this is basically one ton of refrigeration. Why it is important? Because in most of the refrigerating you know refrigeration units, this unit is typically you know used to you know denote the capacity of that particular unit. So, this is uh, one ton. Now, if we recall in the last class, we have also discussed about the working fluid and if we try to recall the working fluid typically used in the refrigeration cycle is basically a refrigerant. So, what kind of property this particular working fluid should have is very important to know. So, today let us discuss a bit more about this particular uh, aspect that is the properties of the refrigerant. So, I am writing properties of the refrigerant. You know if we recall the schematic depiction, so this is basically evaporator and so this is basically refrigerated space. And this heat, this temperature of that particular space is always maintained, you know, uh, at a very low limit that is the that is up to the designer. If you need to maintain temperature of this particular unit, particular space should be at minus 10 degree Celsius. So, this is basically cold space temperature will remain always minus 10 degree Celsius. So, there must be a continuous heat extraction from the space by the working fluid and that is you know that process occurs here in evaporator. So, basically you know the quality of the refrigerant at the exit of the evaporator is saturated vapor. So, this is saturated state saturated vapor. If we try to recall that point 1 that is you know located on the saturated vapor line. Now, we have also discussed that the quality in the point 4 is inside the you know uh, dome. So, basically the quality of the refrigerant at the inlet of the evaporator that is you know mass fraction of vapor in a liquid vapor mixture that is also known as flash gas fraction. So, this is that is uh, you know this is neither purely liquid nor purely vapor. So, the it is two phase mixture. Now, question is upon receiving heat from this refrigerated space that evaporator will be you know that that uh, refrigerant, refrigerant will be evaporated and essentially will be getting saturated vapor at state 1. So, the question is temperature you need to maintain always at a sub 0 level you know for at this space. So, the refrigerant that should be circulated through this evaporator will be able to get you know will be able to you know evaporate or should get evaporated at a sub 0 temperature. So, that is the most important property that is number 1 the refrigerant will be capable of getting evaporated at a low temperature and then this low temperature is again subjective you know what what is the temperature you know. So, if we say this is big, so how big it is? If we say it is low, so how low it is? So, basically sub 0 temperature. Okay. So, this is number 1. Number 2 is see 
the unit cannot be very you know basically you know that the amount of heat that should be extracted from the refrigerated space that also will depend on the mass flow rate of the refrigerant. So, and also the latent heat. So, we really cannot increase mass flow rate of the refrigerant for a smaller unit otherwise the system will be bulky and also the power input or energy input to run the compressor will be more because the specific volume will be more. So, the another important quality of the refrigerant is that this particular working fluid should have you know high you know latent heat at the sub zero temperature. So, that more amount of heat can be extracted from this refrigerated space. So, this is uh, another quantity that is latent heat should be high at the sub zero temperature. So, these two are basically the properties of a refrigerant should have. So, we have you know understood the physical significance of ton of refrigeration, what is the meaning of this? That means, the amount of heat should be extracted by the you know uh, refrigerant from this refrigerated space or cold space. So, this is also cold space okay. and then we have also discussed about the properties that a particular refrigerant should have. So, with this we shall discuss about little bit more about this particular type of working fluid. So, basically you know this refrigerants are halogenated hydrocarbons and marketed under different proprietary names like freon, genitron, isotone etcetera. And the refrigerants are typically either methane based or ethane based. So, refrigerants they are either methane based or ethane based. As I said you the refrigerants are halogenated hydrocarbons. So, try to understand and marketed under different proprietary names. So, basically though it is methane based or ethane based you know hydrogen atoms should be replaced by you know several fluorine and chlorine atoms. So, halogens. Now, this methane based refrigerants are you know basically denoted by two digit number. Uh, so, this is basically I am writing denoted by two digit number while the ethane based are so a three digit number is assigned to the refrigerant which are ethane based. So, now as I said you that refrigerants are given name starts with R. Refrigerants are given name and name starts with R. So, it is if it is methane based it is denoted by two digit number, if it is ethane based it is denoted by three digit number. So, now 
for the methane based again. So, for the methane based you know let us briefly discuss here the hydrogen atoms should be replaced by halogens that is fluorine and chlorine atom. So, for the methane based uh, first digit and second digit. So, what is the physical significance of first digit and second digit? So, first digit is basically uh, say R x x ethane based R y y y triple y three digit number. So, first digit minus 1 is the number of hydrogen atom second digit is second digit indicates number of fluorine atom. So, this is number of fluorine atoms right. So, this is number of fluorine atom and remaining because carbon methane based. So, this basically you know CH 4. So, the first digit is number of hydrogen atom, second digit is number of fluorine atom you know other uh, atoms are basically chlorine. So, other atoms are chlorine. So, for example, R 1 2. So, this is methane based we can see because it has two digits 1 2 and then basically first digit minus 1 that is number of hydrogen atom. So, first digit is 1. So, number of hydrogen atom equal to 1 minus 1 that equal to 0. Number of fluorine atom is the second digit that is 2. So, basically you know hydrogen atom there is no 0, fluorine atom 2. So, carbon has 4 valence. So, basically hydrocarbon this this you know methane based represent is C hydrogen 0 F 2. So, basically there will be another two atoms needed to make carbon saturated. So, this is C L 2. So, this is basically R 1 2. So, this is the this is how this refrigerants are you know uh, the name of the refrigerant is given. So, this is basically dichloro difluoro methane. So, this is dichloro difluoro methane. Similarly, you also can find out what would be the chemical structure and chemical formula for another methane based refrigerant. Similarly, for the ethane based three digit number is assigned to the refrigerant right. So, first digit is always 1. So, for this first digit is always 1, second digit minus 1 equal to number of hydrogen atom. Third digit equal to number of fluorine atom. So, and remaining atoms are chlorine. So, for example, if we take one common example that is R 113 or R 134. So, R 113 
as I said you it is the name is like this R then 3 digits Y Y Y 1 1 3 first digit is always 1 then this is C because ethane based. So, this is C 2 right this is C 2 ethane based first digit is always 1 no issue second digit minus 1 is number of hydrogen atom what is second digit 1. So, 1 minus 1 that is 0 hydrogen atom is 0. So, basically hydrogen atom equal to 0. So, equal to 0 then sec third digit is number of fluorine atom. So, third digit equal to number of fluorine atom that is 3. So, C C L C 2 C L 3 and then remaining basically there are uh, total 8 out of this C C L 3. So, basically you can understand sorry this should be F 3. So, this is F 3 this is F 3 second digit is 3 uh, second third digit is 3. So, that is number of fluorine atom and other or remaining atoms are chlorine atom. So, C 2 there are total 8 C versus C. So, there will be 6 you know remaining uh, valence. So, basically 3 are fluorine atom and remaining 3 are chlorine atom. So, basically this is the chemical formula of this particular refrigerant which is ethane based. So, I have discussed this aspect because that may help you to understand by how the refrigerants are given chemical name and their chemical structures as well. So, with this let us now solve one problem. So, the first problem is a refrigerator uses R134 as the working fluid and operates on ideal vapor compression refrigeration system. So, basically you know working fluid is R134 A. So, you can understand this is 3 digit number. So, certainly the refrigerant is ethane based. So, uh, operates on ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle the evaporator and condenser pressures are 0.21 MPa and 0.8 MPa respectively. The mass flow rate of the refrigerant is 0.8 kg per second determine the followings. Rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space, input power to the compressor, heat rejection rate in the condenser, the COP, what would be the COP if compared with that of the Carnot refrigerator operating between the temperature limits that is 30 degree Celsius and minus 10 degree Celsius. So, you can understand minus 10 degree Celsius that is the temperature of the evaporator and 30 degree Celsius that is the at the condenser temperature. So, basically uh, what we need to do? We need to draw the you know that is very important pH diagram. As I said you that if you recall in an ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle out of the, the four different processes, two processes occur at constant pressure, one process is basically not isenthalpic process, but that is the process for which enthalpy before throttling is equal e equal to enthalpy after throttling. So, out of these four processes we have seen in one process enthalpy before throttling is equal to enthalpy after throttling and for another two processes pressure constant. So, that is why we have you know tried to draw the pH diagram. So, now as I mentioned that point 1. So, basically if we try to draw the schematic of this particular uh, cycle. So, this is condenser So, this is condenser this 
this is evaporator extracting heat from this cold space and that is throttle valve. So, point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4. So, this is the you know schematic description of this cycle. So, this is point 1 that is on the saturated vapor line because we have discussed today again that quality of the refrigerant at the exit of the evaporator is saturated. Now, process 1 to 2 for which you know entropy is constant assuming that compression process is an reversible adiabatic process. So, this is the point 2 certainly you know pressure increases from 1 to 2 because that is why compression compressor is needed and now 2 to 3 that is again constant pressure condensation. Now, question is as I said you that it is very difficult to design a condenser which will you know ensure us to have partial condensation. So, in a condenser it is the the you know refrigerant vapor will be condensed up to the saturated liquid. So, this is point 3 and then from 3 to 4 as I said you this process is highly irreversible even internally. So, this process is represented by this dotted line because the process is very fast and I have discussed very difficult to identify the intermediate states and hence it is very difficult to know the path by which the process will occur and states state 3 will be you know changed to state 4. So, this is the pH diagram. Now, from the given data it is given that the evaporator pressure is you know point uh, the evaporator pressure is point 0.1 MPa. So, basically P 1 is 0 0.1 MPa and P 2 equal to 0 0.8 MPa. Okay. So, this is what we can write from the problem statement. Now, question is if we try to recall in the last class or also you also have discussed whether we would like to calculate the power needed to be supplied to the compressor to drive it or the amount of heat that should be or that will be extracted by this evaporated from this cold space essentially per unit mass flow rate of refrigerant is enthalpy change across, across those uh, devices. So, across those devices or components change in enthalpy is a measure of the heat or work interaction. So, now question is what would be H 1? So, we try to understand H 1 is basically H g at 0 0.1 MPa because this is on the saturated vapor line. So, using the property table. So, this is basically 231.35 kilo joule per kg. So, this value we are getting using the property table. Okay. So, this is the value we are getting using the property table. Now, H 1 is needed to calculate the amount of heat should be extracted provided you know H 4. Now, question is H and not only that what about S 1? So, S 1 equal to S G at 0 0.1 mega Pascal and that is equal to 0 0.9395, 0 0.9395 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, these two we had we can calculate using the property table for this particular refrigerant that is R13, R134A and we get it. 
why this two are important because you know entropy is also important to calculate because for this process s equal to constant entropy equal to constant. Now, if we go to the next slide then what is basically you know T sat. So, basically I am writing here that T saturation at 0 0.1 mega Pascal that is minus 26.43 degree Celsius. So, basically you know this is the saturation temperature corresponding to that pressure for this particular refrigerant. Okay. If we go to the next slide then uh, what we know that process 1 to 2 is an isentropic process. That means, S 2 equal to S 1 and that already you have calculated 0 0.9395 mega uh, 95 kilo joule per kg, uh, kg Kelvin. So, this is this is kilo joule per kg Kelvin. What is given? P 2 is given that is P 2 equal to 0 0.8 mega Pascal. So, this is also given in the problem statement. Now, question is as I said you we also need to calculate what would be the enthalpy. So, for any uh, problem even if you recall the problem that we have solved for the steam power plants essentially you had to calculate enthalpy at each and every state point. Similarly, for this cycle also we need to calculate enthalpy at each and every state point. Note that enthalpy at state point 1 already you have calculated we are trying to calculate enthalpy at state point 2 by knowing the other two properties and if we can calculate enthalpy at state point 3 that would be equal to the enthalpy of state point 4 because the process that you know occurs in this device that is throttle valve. So, this is throttle valve right. So, this is throttle valve and this is compressor. So, this is compressor. So, basically you know uh, we need to calculate enthalpy at state point 2. So, knowing the entropy and pressure we also can calculate enthalpy from the property table. So, again uh, using the property table. Now, question is you we can rather we will certainly use the property table, but at least we should know where this point should be. Though we can really understand from this pH diagram that point 2 is on the uh, you know point 2 is outside this dome. So, that is in the superheated regime, but let us you know verify it. What we can do? You know we can calculate S g corresponding to this pressure 0 0.8 MPa and that is equal to you know 0 0.9066 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now, the enthalpy of the refrigerant at the exit of the compressor for this particular problem statement is 0 0.9395. So, which is that means, S 2 is greater than S G at that pressure that is the 0.8 MPa. So, this indicates 0.2 is in the superheated regime. Now, using the property table as I said you that uh, you can use the property table for R 1 3 4 A and you can calculate just by linear you know linearly or linear interpolation. So, using property table and employing 
linear interpolation, we can have h 2 that equal to 274.47 kilo joule per kg. I would like to tell you one important point. See, certainly we can get it from the property table, there is no doubt about it. Even we can get the value from the property table, but here the pressure that is given 0 0.8 MPa. It may so happen that we need, we uh, may require to calculate enthalpy at point 2 corresponding to pressure that may not be 0 0.8 MPa, that may be 0 0.815, 0 0.8075 like this. For that, you may not get data tabulated in the table for that particular pressure. In such a case, we need to go for interpolation twice, because in that case neither entropy nor pressure for which we are interested in this enthalpy or we are interested in calculating this enthalpy will not be readily available because for 0 0.8 MPa it is readily available, but it may not be available may say for example, 0 0.8135. For that it is little tricky that we have to go for linear interpolation twice, because uh, for that we need to take at least three different data points for which the linear assumptions the variation of the linear variation assumptions we can consider and we can calculate by using linear interpolation theory. So, this is H 2 for this particular case. Now, if we recall that already we have calculated H 1 in the previous slide that is 231.35 kilo joule per kg. Now, we have calculated H 2 again that is 274.47 kilo joule per kg. Now, what next we have to do? We have to calculate enthalpy at state point 3. If we can calculate enthalpy at state point 3, then we have no need to calculate enthalpy at state point 4, because this is the process for which enthalpy before throttling is equal to enthalpy after throttling. So, H 4 should be equal to H 3. Now, the now if we would like to calculate enthalpy rather we have to calculate enthalpy, then what is the clue? Clue is you know the process 2 to 3 that is the condensation process for which heat should be rejected. Now, the process terminates at a saturated liquid line, that means this is not a partial condensation. So, vapor superheated refrigerant vapor should be now converted into saturated vapor, saturated liquid and hence we can calculate enthalpy at state point 3, that is the enthalpy of saturated refrigerant corresponding to the pressure that is 0 0.8 MPa. So, basically H 3 equal to H f corresponding to that pressure for which the condensation process will occur and this H 3 equal to 93.42 kilo joule per kg. And as I said you that H 4 should be equal to H 3 and H 4 equal to H 3 that is enthalpy after throttling is equal to the enthalpy before throttling. And this process 3 to 4 occurs in a throttle valve. Right? So, H 4 also 93.42 kilo joule per kg. So, we have now calculated enthalpy at all state points. Next, let us uh, 
look into the problem statement once more, we have to calculate rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space. So, what would be the rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space? Here mass flow rate of the refrigerant is given because m dot refrigerant is given multiplied with the change in enthalpy. So, that is h 1 minus h 4. So, let us now write it. So, rate of heat removal rate of heat removal from the evaporator equal to m dot refrigerant into h 1 minus h 4 already we have calculated that 0. Point, uh, what is given mass flow rate is given 0. 0.8 kg per second. So, this is 0. 0.8 into what is h 1 minus h 4 h 1 equal to 231.35 minus 93.42. So, that should be kilowatt units should be kilowatt kg per second into kilojoule per kg. So, kilojoule per second that is kilowatt unit. Similarly, we can calculate you know uh, input power to the uh, compressor. So, input power to the compressor equal to again m dot r into h 2 minus h 1. Uh, this is uh, h 2 minus h 1 because again we are applying steady state steady flow equation across all the devices and that is why that is why we could write this is the heat removal rate this is the input power to the compressor so this is again 0. 0.8 into what is h2 that we have calculated h2 that is 274.47 274.47 minus 231.35. Again that is also kilowatt unit is kilowatt and then next is heat rejection rate. Heat rejection rate in the condenser equal to again m dot r into H 3 minus H 2. So, no this is H 2 minus H 3 because enthalpy at state point 2 is higher than enthalpy at state point 4 certainly that is why we are going to have heat rejection. So, that is again 0. 0.8 into 274 to 74.47 minus H 3 that is 90. Point 93.42 unit is kilowatt. Next is we have to calculate what is COP. So, that is coefficient of performance for this particular case for the it is not heat engine. So, this is basically refrigerator. So, for this coefficient of refrigerator you know performance is Q in that is heat removal, heat removal. from the uh, refrigerated space divided by work input to the compressor. In fact, that is this heat removal from the refrigerated space is also known as refrigerating effect. So, this is basically we can write uh, uh, that is m dot r into h 1 minus h 4 divided by m dot r into h 2 minus h 1. So, already we have calculated this quantity and the quantity that is equivalent to work input to the compressor. So, this is the COP. Now, question is the last part of the question is very important that what would be the COP if compared with the 
if compared with that of the Carnot refrigerator operating between 30 degree Celsius and 10 degree minus 10 degree Celsius temperature. So, try to understand in the last class also we had tried to discuss that what would be the differences had it been you know uh, a Carnot cycle. So, instead of a variant of the vapor compression refrigeration cycle had it been a Carnot cycle what would have been the differences and we had discussed and now question is if we consider this then COP basically. So, COP that we have calculated that is for the vapor compression cycle and COP of the Carnot cycle would be equal to. So, this is given minus 10 degree Celsius. So, T 1 by uh, so this is T 1 divided by you know T 2 minus T 1. So, that is minus uh, 10 degree. So, this is 263 divided by T 2 minus T 1 that is 40. So, if we compare this would be the COP. Now, you also need to calculate COP of the vapor compression refrigeration system. We also need to calculate COP of the Carnot following this. Now, then you, you compare what would be the uh, COP of this particular if compared with that of the Carnot engine. So, to summarize today's discussion, we have uh, discussed about the unit of refrigerating effect, then we have discussed about the important properties of a refrigerant should have, then we have also talked about the nomenclature of the refrigerant and finally, we have solved one example illustrating the concept that we have discussed in the previous class. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.